Hey everybody, welcome on in. This is ClayShare Live. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips and tonight we have a special broadcast for you. We're going to have Jeff Rotman from GR Pottery Forms joining us. He's going to do some demos with his GR Pottery Forms and I believe, actually I know, he's going to teach you how to make one of these segmented trays. Now we've done this, this before and I have a class on ClayShare, but you know what? If you want to see it made live, well, it's your lucky afternoon, or maybe it's morning where you are, or evening. I don't know. But today's the day, because we're going to do this with Jeff. Also, we have a special promo on GR Pottery Forms that we're going to announce at 5.55, so in about 50 minutes, you'll get that promo. And it's only good till 8 p.m., so it's only good for about two hours. So after the broadcast is over, if you're watching this as a replay, it's done. I'm sorry. It's just today, Wednesday, July 28th till 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And then, after we make that announcement, or maybe before, I haven't decided, we're going to give away three sets of GR Pottery Firms, this whole, this whole kit, all of these, all of them. So, I don't know if you counted, but there is seven, seven GR Pottery Firms. I was thinking there was six, but oh no, there's seven. So, three of you lucky winners are going to get seven of these GR Pottery Firms. All right, so that's what I got right now. I have some more announcements. We'll come back at the end. You know, we have some new clay share classes and a great workshop with Kevin Kowalski coming up this Saturday. But I don't want to keep Jeff because I know he's got stuff he wants to share with us. So, hey, Jeff. Hello, hello. Sorry, I'm creating my own echo, 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 right? No, sorry, I think the, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think the echo's gone is what I'm hearing. I think so, too. I think I fixed it over here. So, uh, good, good. That's... I know because it's so annoying to have an echo, right? I know. <laughs> Sounds good so, to me. Yeah. So we're here. I'm glad to be here and uh, join all you clay, the clay share community and uh, being able to uh, do a little demo so for y'all. Folks are saying they can't hear you, Jeff. Oh, no. They can't hear Jeff. Let's see. I think that we might get the echo but back if you hear Oh, well, we get the, so that's the thing. We get an echo and we have Jeff talking or we have no echo and Jeff just lips. Oh, yeah, can't hear Jeff. Yeah. Can't hear Jeff. Uh, so, so no Jeff. Maybe just watch on uh, Instagram <laughs> or what do you think, Jeff? What's the best? Um, I think if we turn the volume. Uh, all right. So what? Yeah, Je Echo is going, but can't hear Jeff. So I'm just going to, everybody who's watching everywhere else, I'm going to talk to the Instagram folks. Everywhere else is fine. The Echo, the issues are happening on the Instagram feed. Folks on Instagram, I'm going to tell you, go to ClayShare.com or go to your app store and download the ClayShare app, and you can watch this broadcast live. You can also go to my personal YouTube page, which is Jessica Putnam Phillips. So you can just go to that YouTube channel. And you can watch it there on YouTube if you don't want to have the ClayShare app or go to the ClayShare website. So go and do that. I'm going to shut down the Instagram broadcast and we'll just continue on everywhere else. I'm sorry, folks, on Instagram, but it didn't work. I'll be back next week for ClayShare Live with you all. We're going to be doing Scrafito, Mishima, and general carving using Diamond Core tools. So I'll see you guys next week. Everybody else, hold on. We're not going anywhere. Facebook. Go to Facebook. All right. Go to Facebook. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> YouTube so, or the app. Yeah. All right, so Jeff, you're clear. Go ahead. Jeff's just going to continue on, everybody. All right, all right. Sorry about that. You know, we got to sort out these these new problems of the day, right? So uh, <laughs> we're going to do one other thing here too while we're adjusting. So if you all have questions, you know, and you're watching on YouTube or on ClayShare, just go ahead and type them in, and I will ask them of Jeff. Perfect. All right, let's get started then. All right. So I just thought I would, uh, since we're kind of featuring these rectangle shapes and uh, we're giving them away, so just kind of, and I, I know a lot of you already have them, so that's great too, kind of just giving you some more ideas and ways to use them. This is the, the probably most used size that I have um, when I was doing production work. So six by 14 rectangle, it's just a wonderful serving size. And um, what I wanna demonstrate here first is just giving you options. Um, fortunately, I didn't have the six by 14, but you have get, get an idea. This one on, the, on my right is uh, with the yellow and leaves. 
imprint. Um, that is, I, I'm sell, selling this, would sell this platter for $65, where I would sell this little tray for 25. So same form, just a little more, this one has a foot, this one doesn't. So just kind of giving you, um, it's more encouragement to do what you like, what works best for you and uh, know that you can do so many different things with each form. So, um, and then later on in the, um, later on in the time, we'll, um, I'll, I will switch over to making a little segment and tray if we have time, but, uh, yeah, just gonna talk a little bit here. So, uh, I can see maybe a couple questions from the YouTube, uh, chat, but definitely let Jessica know. Um, and then she can ask, ask those questions. Definitely, um, interrupt me if you, uh, I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, and so um, I don't know. Maybe you're in a situation you you're wanting a job change. You want to make uh, pottery more of an income for yourself. Really, how I got started in all this was I lost my job in 2005, and kind of had to use pottery as a way to kind of put food on the table. And so, um, using these forms are really kind of helped me kind of launch forward and uh, be able to kind of reproduce shapes over and over and over and over again. So I kind of hope that that's for you and will help you and uh, make you successful in whatever, uh, however many pieces you want to make. But uh, definitely I saw this quick kind of way of, um, it's definitely not an easy way. It just it kind of systemizes things. Uh, so if you're new to it and you you may have Make things it may not working out as well as you thought, and uh, but it, it does definitely take a little bit of practice and uh, a little bit of getting used to. But by the time you made 30 pieces, you're going to be in really good shape. So, uh, uh, but yeah, so hopefully the forums will create that support you need and kind of launch you into the into the journey that you're hoping to be on. So, anyway. yeah, and I just want to add that you know I've been making plates for a while but I never liked making plates and until I got the GR pottery forms especially the WAS system I mean after that 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 made plate making fun again for me so yeah right, right? Yeah, totally I'm glad to, glad so glad to hear that because I think the same is the case for me like early on I took on some on some dinnerware commissions and unfortunately you know you have these expectations you want to to give to the to the customer, and uh, there's these things that can go wrong with clay, right? And hopefully the the forms, and I think it's 80% or 90% better as far as that support that the forms will offer you to, throughout the whole process of making. So hopefully it'll systemize that for you. And uh, yeah, so yeah, definitely I'm, I think that's the kind of kind of benefit of of using the forms, kind of creating that support. So. All right, so I see some folks are saying they got their forms ready. They're going to make along with you, Jeff. All right, so. good. All right, do <laughs> so it. My 14. Do it. Ready? Nice slab of yeah. clay. I don't have any clay. Darn, I'm not ready. Oh, we better get some. <laughs> I can do it. I'm going to get it while you go. You go. I'll catch it. Okay. Deal. Um, so I'm going to actually make this one with a with a lip on the outside and make it kind of have handles on it. Um, so I made this clay a little bit wider then the tray is going to be and um, also a little bit longer. I really like to, um, let's see, what was I going to say? Now I already just forgot what I was going to say. Um, but I like to make the slabs uh, ahead of time, making sure that they're long enough and kind of prepared right. But uh, anyway, I forgot my train of thought where I was going. But anyway, let's get back to it here. So I have this about a quarter thick slab, just stoneware. This is a buff speckled stoneware. And I like to use my rib that has these kind of rounded edges to kind of compress those particles. And it's really important with um, slabs is to uh, help to kind of formulate those particles into kind of a shape. So really important not to just kind of remove that those canvas marks that were created by rolling it out but to be basically be able to compress those clay particles together really well 
And I do that by going in a couple different directions. And uh, yeah, so now I have this nice big piece. I um, I use this uh, this little smaller. I like this I like this little uh, pattern this creates from just a, a piece of felt that I got that I bought from Michaels during the during the Thanksgiving giving season. It was a table runner. You're famous for that. You know that everybody loves that. <laughs> it's funny, <laughs> right? This one piece of canvas, right? And I love. I would love. Uh, hopefully, we can. Hopefully, they start making more of this of things, right? Um, but uh, I love that the canvas creates a, like a third level of texture. So we'll just create this on here. And now you can. This felt is about an eighth of an inch thick, so it's pretty thick. And um, by using my um, my roller here, I can compress, the clay is pretty wet, so I can go pretty deep if I wanted to. And I'm just gonna kind of put a nice, uh, easy kind of fairly shallow texture on there just by going through. And I really like to use this rounded side, the smaller side, because this really helps me to get, to gain um, control of that pressure that I'm putting on there. So I'm just going to kind of try to make sure that I address every area. But I really like this kind of handmade look as well so I, I don't mind a little bit of variety in the um, the thickness of, of the texture. And the more you try to make it perfect, um, the less perfect it becomes, right? So kind of let that uh, making, make it fun. When you make it fun, it translates fun at the end, right? When you uh, make it with a lot of anxiety and worry, it translates that anxiety and worry to, at the end. So how do you want your pieces to be fun or anxiety provoking? <laughs> yeah. So let's see here. See how well we did this. You know, I have used, had this piece of felt for quite a long time, so it is getting a little bit beat up, but, uh, but it's, I really like it saying, you know, one, the texture of the shape, one, the bare clay, and then two, the texture of the whole felt on there. So it really kind of creates this kind of fun texture in there and kind of natural kind of separation between the, the clay and the glaze. So, and so I'm sure a lot of people ask, these are just some glaze that I made, uh, dipping glazes by uh, altering some colorants. So. There's lots of fun stuff out there. If you ever want to explore your own glazing, I know Jessica has a bunch of content about that, but um, if you want, so, um, but anyway, it's kind of a fun way to kind of, and this glaze, this like kind of a lot of the celadons that are on commercially made, the heavy particles kind of rest inside those textures. So it's a great, uh, great way to uh, gain some texture or get some movement of your glaze here. We've got some questions. Um, how right. do you know that your clay is not too dry or too wet? And what is too thick or too thin? Good question. Those are great questions, right? And it's kind of like yeah. when you're, I always like to reference cooking, baking. Uh, sometimes you just kind of know by experience. And you can tell like um, if you've used some commercial clays, that sometimes is pretty, sometimes a little stiffer and sometimes it's really soft. So it, uh, you kind of have to be able to adjust. And so I would um, definitely adjust um, when you can or try to figure out a way to adjust because sometimes you, like if this was a little bit, a little bit uh, stiffer, I would um, have to press harder and longer with my roller. So uh, definitely, definitely that is, uh, kind of what you have to kind of deal with, with this kind of raw material. But the kind of general rule for me is to try to take it fresh out of the bag. 
if I were to take the scraps that I used from this slab and then wedge them together and then try to make a second one, I'll face all these problems. So I like to just use the fresh clay out of the bag, set the scraps aside and add moisture and remix them for a, a, a different batch, a different day and use the pug mill to kind of help do that. So um, yeah, so clay is one of the most inexpensive things and it can be recycled if you don't fire it. So I try not to make things with uh, scrap clay to uh, prevent it from having issues, which then, you know, you have to throw away anyway, and now it's fired versus being able to be recycled. So try to, I like, I love to promote uh, people to avoid um, using scraps if all possible. And I will say that practice definitely helps. The more you make, the better you'll get at it and you'll understand the, the dryness and how thick your clay should be. And if you want some step-by-step -step tutorials, I've got a few hundred classes on clayshare.com and I have quite a few with the GR Pottery Forms. You can just check them out and see if that's what you want. We have another question. Um, we have a person who's having trouble getting the edges smooth and even on their forms. Any tips for a newbie on their pieces? They're yeah, making? definitely. Yeah, I think this is, the, this is this, that question I think I'm gonna address here shortly. All right, and so. I, really, I never really understood really the real question about this um, because I would just do it naturally a certain way. I think a lot of people pre-cut the clay and then form it and the edges are all uneven. And so what I will do is cut it after the fact and then I have straight edges or a little bit straighter edges and a little bit easier to manage. So that may be, a, if you're a newbie, think about those two different ways of whether you pre-cut the slab or you cut it at the end. Um, and for me, I always, I always uh, would, I keep, I keep forgetting about that because if I do pre-cut the clay, I, I fuss with it a lot more at, after I uh, make the piece. And so, um, which seems like the opposite, right? So it's, a, I think that's a, that's a big factor. So try it both ways and see if you get that. One question, the one other question I didn't answer before was um, the thickness. And thickness is really, this is about a quarter inch, but um, that is to me, a totally a preference thing. You know, thicker the clay, the heavier it's gonna be. Uh, so if you want a nice light, plate, you want to use thin clay. If you want a big, heavy, sturdy plate, then you want to use thicker clay. The forms are very forgiving as far as this angle is concerned. So you can, um, you can get away with quite thin clay. Uh, if you experience some cracking, then you probably pressed it and it stretched it out too unevenly. So maybe go back and uh, try this to kind of think about where, where you're pushing or stretching that clay. But uh, yeah, the thickness of the clay is, um, really in my mind a preference thing um, but uh, you can gain a little bit more forgiveness if it's thicker but uh, then you're going to have a fairly heavy piece so uh, I, I think it's good to have this nice around the quarter inch depends on your clay too how much it shrinks so so yeah good questions any other questions out there yeah, how did you decide on the name GR Pottery? GR Pottery, all right. This is one. That's one of my favorite. Um, my joking answer. You want to hear my joking answer first? Because I like to joke around <laughs> and have people <laughs> chuckle. <laughs> but uh, my wife's name is Gretchen, and our last name is Rotman. So oh. it's Gretchen Rotman Pottery Forms. Pottery. You named Gretchen. after your wife. Like people name their boats after their wives. You need yeah. the business. <laughs> so that way I can tell her I'm thinking about her all the time. All the time I'm thinking about GR. So, uh, <laughs> but really, <laughs> um, when we when it started in 2014, I think location was really important for people. And I think still is, right? That we, we know where things are made and um, kind of helps us to kind of reference things. So GR is really Grand Rapids. And so it's kind of location-based. So GR, we call Grand Rapids short for GR. So uh, GR Pottery Forms really is the location of um, where we are at. And uh, I don't know if you, if anybody, I don't, uh, 
Grand Rapids is a wonderful place. I hope you can come. Don't come in January or February, but uh, <laughs> that's kind of the rest of the year. Uh, unless you like snow and blizzards, uh, it's nice then too. So it's, uh, but you know, it's winter. <laughs> you can come ice fishing. In January or <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, so what I'm doing here now is I now position the form, and this is what I also like about not pre-cutting. Maybe that's the real reason. Don't tell anybody, but I don't have to commit until now about uh, where everything's going to be. And I don't. I know that I'm not going to mess up because I can adjust. But uh, yeah, so now I have it kind of positioned a little bit where I want in the in the in the um, texture there. And now what I can do is lay another board on top. And now just pick up both boards like a sandwich, and then do a little flip. So now that stays registered. I know um, it's great. These boards, and a lot of times when people ask this question about the boards, I'm uh, using plaster, just drywall boards. And I'm really using them because they're really cheap and available. And I also like how this material feels and kind of is soft and walking and makes, you know, just kind of comforting to work with. So, um, so yeah, so it's this drywall board and I've taped, I've taped the edges, uh, around. So if you know, uh, the non cut edge and the, or the not on the cut edge, I guess I tape it so that that plaster doesn't kind of leak out into your clay. So, so right, do so. you sell clay at your shop? So if somebody comes to buy some forms from you, do you sell clay as well? No clay. No, no we sorry don't. folks. No clay. Um, maybe in the future, but it's, uh, it's, uh, right now, no, it's, uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're positioning ourselves to be able to sell clay, especially project based clay, uh, where you need a little chunk to make a project, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it requires a whole different set of equipment and, uh, different space. So, which we're kind of maybe, which we're sort of working on, but it's, uh, could be possible in the future, but we don't have we don't have clay. Um, so here's an here's an important thing I think. Talk about if you want to use really thin clay, make sure you kind of push kind of this gently push the clay towards the form, so it doesn't stretch it and stress it. So if we push that clay towards it, it's uh, going to stay a little more even. So if you have using thinner clay and having problems with cracks, don't press so hard. Uh, but what you what you are do what, when you are pressing press towards the form, um, and press kind of in those stress areas before you press down the outside. Because if we press down this outside, um, that will keep the clay in place and it'll it'll force that clay to be stretched anyway. That makes sense. So kind of work on this kind of this edge close to the form first, making sure it's in place before you push uh, compress the other other parts of it. We have a so question gonna, about your forms. Are you going to be making square forms with tapered corners? Uh, not necessarily. Um, I really like uh, it's kind of naturally happened. And I think with with selling through distributors and other partners around the world, it kind of limits our, our uh, options of, you know, we don't, I can't really carry a thousand different things. Um, of, of the same thing. So I really like, especially like these, and this is what I'm gonna show you here in a minute, but I really like to have this kind of general shapes because that then allows you to have choices of how the edge is gonna be cut, um, whether it's wavy or not, um, and kind of gives you a lot more opportunity to put, to develop the surface that you like. Where if I start making those choices, then you're you're really going to have to be um, do the same thing that I do, use the same glazes or uh, same patterns. So I think it really works really well to have these general shapes. So I'm trying to avoid. Obviously, there's some things we add from time to time just to keep things fresh. And um, if we get enough requests for certain things, then it seems to like to make more sense. But um, but yeah. So that, that is a, I mean, really valid question. Unfortunately, um, 
is the limits of of having so many different options. I always like to refer to uh, the orange juice aisle, like how many orange juice uh, flavors, additives, whatever do we need to have, right? So um, I think it's similar here. So I think less is more and trying to really hone in on what you like with the simple shapes first and kind of you can do you can do really do a lot more with the simple simple shapes so like for a square with those like kind of rounded edges uh different all you have to do is kind of cut those edges a little bit rounded and you get this whole different pattern so it's really it's uh really gives you a lot of a lot of options all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut this edge with um with my ruler and I, yeah i think i'm just going to go straight because again i i want the emphasis to be on on that leaf pattern that i put in there so normally i like sometimes if it's just a, a solid color i may add um add a, a, a more decorative edge to give it a little more interest but since i'm um I want the focus to be on that pattern under there. I'm just going to uh, leave it straight. And sometimes then what I can do too, to kind of kind of make it feel different, like like it has an end, has the end on here. What I did was I put the ruler up against that edge. I'll show you on the other side too, so in case you can't have, see very well through the camera. I guess you can you can see that makes a little line. I move that, now I have a reference point for width, and now I'm just gonna cut kind of a little bit of a curved kind of arced edge. Try not to get, so all I did is put up against there, flip it over once, and then now I'm gonna cut with this nice curved edge. I had a system help with me one time, Kayla, she was amazing, is amazing. She's an artist, I think in New York City now. Uh, but uh, she made these one platters one time that, that this, this is a little curved. I'm like, I really like that. So um, kind of uh, added that from time to time. It's a little different than what she did, but it really kind of sparked that uh, interest for me. So I really, from time to time, just adds just a little bit of, a little bit of fla little flavor which also kind of brings to the point of like, if you really try to make this straight particular edge, it's, it's uh, never going to be straight in particular, right? So if you have a little bit of little bit off, it's going to feel way better. So there we go. So uh, actually, yeah, we'll just leave it as that for now. I will come back. I think we're going to, I don't have quite enough time to add the foot on here. If we have some time at the end, I'll do that. But you kind of get the general idea of this kind of extra uh, foot on here, or extra lip, I'm sorry. Actually, I better quick show you this one other thing. I like to make a little handle, and the handles can be so many different ways. A handle, in this case, is just gonna be a hole in the end. So I'm gonna use my, use my uh, rib as a guide and it's really just for measurement so that I can cut it the same on both sides. And it's right here, it's available. I could have a special handle hole cut, like maybe you wanna make your own template, but uh, I'm just gonna, so again, I'm just setting down here And then just kind of connect those lines. Bam, there we go. Now we have a. <laughs> I can't use bam, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so now we have. And again, it's just a simple little thing that adds a whole different design element and dimension, right? So there's a few questions about the rims being so wide and sagging. Do you worry about that? What do you do to deal with that to prevent it? Yeah. Oh, I like that question. Uh, yeah. So I really shouldn't show you, huh? Um, 
Let's come back to can we come back to that question? We can come back to sure. that. That's, that's a key one. And I will um, I'm gonna quick make the other one here and then make the segmented tray and then hopefully we'll have a time there at the end to uh, do that. So we're just going to grab another slab of clay. I had them kind of pre-rolled out. You can use uh, you can use a slab roller, rolling pin. Again, compressing the clay. And I think um, you know, unfortunately, for you fortunately for me um you need uh to have multiple forms right to make it uh to be able to produce a lot so it really helps to have so wait for our sales when you want to beef up up your uh items so it really helps to have um to have a um a few of them so like normally i would could make if i were going to do a on our fair production, I would uh, have 10, eight, eight or 10 of each shape so I could make, make those each day. So what I really find, and I can't really show you this today, is um, that by cutting them, this goes to that first question about kind of the edges and evening them out. If you, um, once they kind of sit overnight and uh, become leather hard, that's a great time to kind of fix up those edges. And uh, that, that uh, yeah, this, this works really efficiently. And then you can even things out. You can uh, trim things down. Okay, again, kind of pushing that clay towards the form. Now using my finger going along the side. Anybody out there have problems with corners kind of breaking off underneath there? I know we get some questions from time to time. When, and what happens is with that happening, I had a lot of uh, students when I was teaching classes that would happen to them and figured out what would happen is, is that you try to cook cut as close to that edge as possible. And right here on these corners, it becomes, it's like a, like a junction point. So everything is kind of coming together right there. So sometimes it's thick and sometimes it's thin. And so if it was thin, it's gonna break off, right? So what I always tell people is to take your finger and run it along that edge, which then creates a little bit of a mark and then just cut right along that finger mark. And so we're cutting about a finger width away from that edge and you'll never have a busted off uh, corner. If you want, you can then kind of, once it's leather hard, trim it down, oops, trim it down a little bit. So, uh, made a mark on the top here, I'll fix real quick. You can trim it down to um, whatever size you need there. So you can see how quick it is to make these little trays, 25 bucks a piece, right? So hopefully that will help you uh, develop some nice little appetizer trays for folks. All right. So that was fast. But you can see. Oh, it's fast. I'll pull this to get one one time here. So this was the point of all this. I guess I better show you that. So you can see maybe from that overhead camera here the um, that if uh, just by using having a different edge, you develop a whole different style of plate, right? So. Experiment, figure out what you like, and maybe you like to pre-cut the slabs and have this nice kind of prep decorative slab. All good. That's why we get to just make those decisions as artists, right? 
exactly. So we got a question, or well, we got a couple questions, sure. but this one is on the smaller forms, my corners flare outward. Yes, that's because you pre-cut them. I'll bet. I'll bet you're pre-cutting them and then you get this like little extra corner. So either um, cut afterwards or just trim those corners down to what you need when they're leather hard. It's interesting how that um, I've always, I've always I, those are little things that make me curious, right? Of like, it doesn't really happen when you do round forms, just with squares and rectangles. So like why, you know, why does that, uh, what makes it have that little pointed end or corner? Uh, what what measurement is it? Or like how will you pre-cut your slab not for that not to happen? So yeah, I can totally, now I can see, pick out, if I look at your piece, I can probably tell you how it was made pretty easily. Um, that's one of one of the kind of clues of, um, if it's got the little pointed, pointed corners, you basically probably pre-cut it the same size of whatever the form was, and then uh, drape it over, and then it kind of creates these kind of cornered ends. All right, so these are the fun things about, um, you know, different forms. We can add different parts, and like the thing we're giving away here today, you can create these segmented trays. They are great for relishes, uh, serving containers. So you just have to make sure the sizes kind of match up and then you can kind of mix and match to whatever size you want. And I am going to use this lovely tray. I just got this lovely tray from Melinda Allen from Plum Island Transfer. She's working on these nice kind of insert um, texture things right now. Um, let's see if I find the one here. She sent me some samples of that too. Um, but it's this little, these little kind of thick kind of cutouts. So check her out at Plum Island Transfers. But here's a great finished plate of what I'm going to do here. Uh, she has this nice kind of brown clay with a clear glaze on the bottom and some nice yellow glaze on top. So nice variety of, um, of fun. And you can see how this would be a great uh, little tray for, you know, putting some olives here, some onions over here. This could be your little... Um, what are those things called? Oh, martinis. They're little martini tray. <laughs> so uh, pickles, yeah, whatever you want to do in there, right? So just a fun little tray to, to do lots of um, lots of things. I think they're great. Just, uh, fun things to make. So let me so make one we have of a question. How long do you leave them on the forms? How long do you leave your clay on the form? I know yeah. we're going backwards a little, but some oh, no, I'm just getting to some comments. Oh, good question. Perfect. Uh, I leave them on until they're leather hard, so that I, I can when I pick up the pick up the slab, it doesn't flex. If it flexes, it's gonna kind of remember that flex and warp. So it's usually from four to eight hours, depending on the humidity level, the time of year. So, uh, or if you're in a really dry area like Arizona, it can be fifteen minutes. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so you might want to watch it. Uh, the key for me really to think about is uh, making sure that um, it dries evenly. That is the main key. It can dry fast or slow, it just needs to be even. And sometimes you think that putting it under plastic makes it dry a little more evenly. Where with these slabs and they kind of, they want to do their thing. Sometimes putting it under plastic, uh, makes it dry unevenly. So there's one side that's maybe closer to the area where air is escaping. And so you gotta be really cautious. Jessica, a couple of people are asking if you're gonna repost this or is it just gonna be live? So we always have the replay up afterwards. Yeah. So it'll be up on ClayShare.com and on the ClayShare Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. So it'll be all those places you can watch it. Um, the only thing that won't be available is that discount, that special promo that Jeff's going to announce at the end. That's yeah. only today, tonight. And I might I might see if I can have Jeff extend it. A few people were commenting that after this broadcast, I do the private for premium members that goes till seven. And then Michael Harbridge, who's um, another artist, does a broadcast for an hour after that. So he ah. goes from seven to eight or 8.30. And they were saying they wouldn't have time to shop 
properly. So right. I don't know if Jeff wants to go to nine. Oh, yeah, we we'll, can we'll go talk. till 10. 10 good? Oh, easy, easy. Yeah, 10 Eastern. All right. So only good till 10 yeah, Michael, Eastern. Jeff said hi. Yes. Jeff says hi. So you can all thank Jeff so you don't have to rush out of Michael's broadcast. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. He is, he is amazing. I, I haven't seen him for a while, no, but I know I've worked with him, and uh, he's got some great ideas for sure. Obviously, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's great. So again, um, maybe I'll just add another quick texture on here. Here's a different. Here's a different leaf one. Um, There's another super nice guy. Forclay.com. He's in the Wisconsin area, probably near Michael, but makes these nice kind of wood, wood cut uh, little stamps. Add another leaf on here. So this is, that's the great beauty of, of using slabs, right, is that you can add texture. And so again, this creates a little interest for the glazes to do their thing. I'm going to make these segmented trays. So I'm going to make sure that these parts are, you may feel like you can um, make wider dividers, but definitely you want those, those, uh, those forms to be uh, touching each other. So then they don't slide when you put the slab on. So I'm going to drape this slab on here. Maybe I'll just leave a little edge for for um, for handle, and just to kind of give it a little more place for you to grab on. I might just lift this clay up so I can push the clay down into that a little bit without stretching it too much. And again, this one's really super important to not overstretch the clay, especially in those stress areas. So making sure you kind of push the push the slabs slab towards the forms kind of softly i always like to say there's like three levels of pressure kind of do really soft first and then kind of do a little more medium and then the third one is to use the rib to kind of make even pressure all the way around there we go so now it's in place take my little rib here Press that outside. And I'm just going to gently push with my rib in the inside part. Because if you push too hard, you're going to stretch. You're going to crack the clay. So try a couple. This is a fun. The best part of clay, right, is, is the, the practice and making stuff, right? So uh, have fun making a bunch of stuff. Practice, make ten of something that you don't even want to, that you don't even keep. Just make them to make them. Things will go a lot better. Now I'm just going to kind of go around. I really like that these have canvas marks from the um, slab roller. The canvas that went through the slab roller. So I know that I've kind of addressed all of those edges how much time do you think we need for the giveaway just like five minutes yeah, five minutes five minutes is all we need all right perfect five minutes to tell them the discount code yes oh good we got eternity here we got like 10 minutes we got 15 minutes total oh we got lots of time but not that much <laughs> time to ask all answer all your questions so uh do you have any? There's, there's, there's always questions. I mean, that's <laughs> the way it is. So, so again, I like to just use my finger here. Same thing. Kind of gives me a good, nice measurement. I'm going to go a little past the forms. Drag my finger along that edge. Makes a little mark to follow along. And uh, that one got a little bit off. But if you if you cut to where you're going as opposed to where you are, you're going to make a much straighter line. Did you catch that? That was pretty deep, deep thoughts by Jeff. 
teeth puffs. We're gonna start publishing those. <laughs> Cut to where you're going instead of where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. My son was just in driver training, so I love this. If you ever hear me at the workshop, then you probably will hear this conversation. But use those times in life where you, uh, you always remember something. And one of those things was driver training, right? Pretty formative time. And the driver training instructor said to look down the road instead of like right over your hood. If you'll go straighter, I must have been going kind of crooked. <laughs> So, uh, you know, definitely look down the down the road and uh, you'll go straighter. But same thing with knife, right? If you uh, think about where you're going instead of where you are, you're going to go have a much straighter line. Funny how that works. I always like to think about how did that works? Like automatically, yeah, automatically go straight, going through a curvy road or wherever. If I just look where I'm going to go, car goes straight. <laughs> Two big, big, huge semis next to me. I stay right in the middle of the lane if I look forward. <laughs> Don't look over to the sea and what can run you over. <laughs> It'll run you over. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I think when we're working in clay, we have time to, to think about things too. You know, your mind kind of gets a little more philosophical, possibly, about. Life and so there were some questions asking about the glazes on that tray. I don't know if you know them, the one you just had. Uh, but you have to go uh, visit the Plum Island Transfers or Linda Allen and ask, Ceramic. Okay. Ask her. She'll. I'm sure she'll be happy to share. So people are saying, don't forget to tell everyone how to keep the sides from sagging on a large tray. That's why I'm in hard grade. I'm going to work on that right now. Glad you remembered. And here's a question. I cut up to the edge of the form. Is that a bad idea to cut up right up to the edge? Is that bad? I think it is actually because a lot of times I was talking about those corners. You get uh, there's a good chance that you're gonna have an uneven corner and it's gonna kind of create this funny edge. So I always suggest either cutting up above the edge or way outside of that edge. That makes right. sense. Yeah. Nice little shallow pieces. All right. So I'm just going to quick add this foot onto the big tray here and show you how do you address these trays with lips. Seems like it would be a rim, right? But the rim, I guess, is actually this edge, and then the lip is this whole piece. So I just set my little strip of clay on here that I made with the Hang Danny foot maker. And oh, Jess has a class on that, so you can make one. It's true. I love my foot maker. Of course, you can just buy one from Jeff if you don't want to make your own. <laughs> yeah, make that choice. You want to make it yourself or uh, buy one? It, uh, yeah. So it used to be, uh, I used to go into the hardware store and buy a bunch of those, and they'd kind of be like, what are you doing with all these? Corn skewers. We're having corn. It's corn season. <laughs> I need a lot. I, I eat a lot of corn. I need a lot of these corn cob holders. <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking a little bit to answer your question here, right? I think I'm. I like stalling. You can ask. You can ask Shelby. <laughs> especially, if, especially if it's making uh, videos that have to be uh, produced. I like to stall. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you only got three more minutes, and then we're going to have to do the the winners. So yes. No pressure, we're, though. We're, we're two minutes away from being done. So hang tight. No pressure. All right. Now we use this. Uh, unfortunately, we have these off the site right now, but these little, we're waiting. We've been waiting for like six weeks uh, for these little tools to come in. And we're out of Is them. that a so, Kemper? It's a Kemper. Yeah, I have one. This is great. Yeah, isn't it good? It's a nice, uh, to me, it's my favorite modeling tool from Kemper. But uh, they're waiting for their shipment to come in. Send to us. All right, so now I have this nice foot. 
And here is the thing with uh, the lips. So finally getting to your question. <laughs> if the thing we, everybody wants to know. Everybody what? The thing everybody wants to know. Yes. Okay, good. Hopefully, let me check here. Okay, good. I have them. Uh, we have these spacers. And I found it really difficult to make this extra lip, uh, to make a mold for this lip. And but I really I found that if you just use a spacer, it lifts the whole piece up and creates uh, an angle from where the spacer is to the outside of the clay. It creates a slope, right? And that slope helps the clay, the gravity of the drying to for those particles to line well, and then also for it to um, kind of have an angle so if it's in the firing, it's going to hold itself up. So what we do is we just kind of lift these, uh, and you may think this is a really long piece. You may have a couple spacers. You really only want to have one. That way, if you decide to move it, you have a little chance, a little more chance of getting inside. And then I can just move this piece off the edge, put my spacer under there. And this one, I got this kind of longer outside edge. So I'm going to put two spacers on there. Really, I put three, I put it two quarters and a half. You could use something else, but you can see see how now it's got this kind of raised edge. And now I can do, just push down these outside edges. So I have this nice, even outside edge. It has a little bit of an angle on there. So it's gonna kind of hold its shape. If we were to just leave that on the board, we are, it would uh, start to sag or start to curl up. And then when you flip it over, it's gonna kind of flop down, right? So, yeah. So there we go. Sorry, that was a fast, a long time to get to a fast answer. Use a spacer. Yeah, but it's good you showed it. <laughs> yeah. That's what the spacers and, and are. Whether that's right. the round ones for dinner plates, if you have a big lip, or the square ones for all the other sizes. Um, and we have them in two sizes, quarter inch and a half. Depending on I didn't know you had round ones. Yeah, they're the wall ones. Oh, the wall. Okay, I have. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. Some the wall. So we have a question about that Kemper tool. What was that one called again? It's a J820. J820. A, A is an apple. Jeff. Oh, J A. Ga. G A20. Ga20. Yeah. Okay. So that's Great. what that tool is if you folks are looking for it. All right, Jeff, you're gonna hang out while we do the drawing? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Up there? But definitely let me know if you guys ever have questions. Um, well, we need the code too. Are you gonna tell us the code? We're gonna put the code up on the yeah. screen. Are you gonna? Code? We'll put it on the screen. Okay, okay so this is what, can I, should we do it now? Should I do it? You wanna do it? Well, okay, well, it's up to you. No, wait, wait. We wait to see, because if people want, they might not wanna buy these, but they might want to get more, I don't know. Yeah. So we'll wait. Yeah, let's wait. We'll wait. That way let's everybody's wait. a winner. That's right. All right. So I'm going to do, I've got three lucky folks' names right here. So we're going to come back to me and we're going to give away, I'm going to grab it so y'all can see it. Ta da! This pyramid of GR pottery forms. So, with these forms, we've been making lots of things over the last month. You know, we made this size cute little tray, this one right here, made all these this stack of small trays some with feet some with not not with feet we made just like jeff showed us the segmented trays we did that two weeks ago so we made some of those and we did this as well where we made the large tray with the three little baby ones in there so this gets you all this and more so the three lucky winners of this gr pottery form prize pack are y'all ready all right, first winner is Maya Booker. Congratulations, Maya Booker. You have won yourself this fabulous seven piece set of TR Pottery Forms. You're gonna love it, you're gonna love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, ready? We're gonna go fast so I can get Jeff to do the code. So we'll, we'll do that quickly. The second winner of this TR Pottery Forms prize pack is Shelly Schumacher, Shelly. Congratulations, you've won yourself some GR Pottery Forms. 
I love this set, by the way, and if you're just starting with GR Pottery Forms, these are great beginner forms. I find that the rectangle, square forms, square-sided forms, I really love these ones to start with. So if you're thinking to ease into GR Pottery Forms, check out these right here. All right, our third winner for today of this prize pack is Beth Sullivan. Beth Sullivan, congratulations. You are our third winner in tonight's GR Pottery Forms giveaway. So that's Maya Booker, Shelly Schumacher, and Beth Sullivan. Congratulations, ladies. It has been a great month of giveaways with Jeff. A huge thank you to Jeff for sponsoring this month. If you didn't win, have no fear. You can still be a winner because we have this special promo that are we going to put it up on screen? Do you want to let Jeff tell us about it? Uh, well, he can tell us about it. And, and, okay, let's go back to Jeff. Jeff, we're going to go back to you. You can tell the code, and we'll put it up on screen. All right. All right, all right. Well, thank you, and congratulations to all the winners. And if you already have these shapes and would rather have something different, just let us know. We'll send you a gift, gift certificate to buy other shapes as well. So I definitely want you to uh, enjoy your uh, your uh, victory, uh, your, your uh, spoils. <laughs> So, right. uh, yeah, for all the rest of you, I know, um, you know, we have the, the clay share discount constantly, uh, 10% off. Um, it's only a hundred items are regular, regular priced items. Uh, cause the other one we're limited to what we can do with our discount and, uh, all the other, all those other ones are discounted as well. So definitely, uh, use the clay share discount, but for tonight, um, you can get 20% off. Uh, if you use the code LIVE, L-I-V-E, and uh, type that in, we'll give you 20% off anything that we have um, available on, on our on online store, grpotteryforms.com, and there's probably links everywhere to get there, but um, yeah, thank you, Jessica and Kevin, and you guys in the community of Clayshare, you're amazing, and uh, I'm just so glad to be a part of it and, uh, and join you tonight. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much for this whole month. And, you know, Jeff's been with the Clayshare family. Um, he was one of my first sponsors to come on board with Clayshare when we started over four years ago now. So we love having Jeff on board whenever he can join us. And I'm thrilled that we're going to do this promo. So it's 20% off until 10 p.m. Eastern time, two day only. So you have time to go and shop and leisurely pick out what you want. Um, you know, make a, have time to make yourself a wish list and then get the things that you have on that list. All right. So while Jeff was doing that, I quickly did this. No, I'm kidding. I didn't do that. Uh, I did that earlier. So <laughs> I was too busy answering questions and typing to make any pots, but I did that earlier today. So um, that's what we have for tonight's live broadcast. We have prime time coming up next. I got my new prime time t-shirt on, which I'm pretty excited for. So that's the private broadcast we do for premium members of clayshare.com. We're going to have our wrap up, our July wrap up for the Clay Share Challenge. We're gonna talk about how that went for the month. Give you a preview announcement of the August, although I haven't put the August challenge up yet, but um, you guys will get a little sneak peek. And we'll do a little thimble house make along. So we'll make some teeny tiny houses. And, and we'll talk about GR Pottery Forms and maybe make some stuff there too. We'll see what will happen. So check out clayshare.com for hundreds of online pottery classes. We also have workshops. Have a great one coming up this Saturday with Kevin Kowalski. And remember, premium members always save 20% off on all of our workshops. And when you sign up for our workshops, you get them forever and ever, no matter whether you stay a premium member or not. doesn't matter. All right, everyone. Have a great night. I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.